Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video guys, I'm going to be showing you returning in Roblox Studio. So let's get right into it. So what returning is, returning is you can send information back to a function to where you called it. So let's make a function called uh, add numbers. Okay. I'm going to have number one and number two as the parameters. Okay, so we have our function. What I want to do is I'm gonna say result equals number one plus number two. I am then gonna return result. So then when I call add numbers and I put in one and two, what's happening is I'm sending in one and two, right? Number one is literally the number one. Number two is literally the number two. In the result, I'm adding these two. So this will equal three. I am then returning the result, which what that means is result will be equal to this function because we are returning it. Now, it doesn't right now, so we have to capture it in a result or a variable. So now, result is equal to the same thing as 1 plus 3. I mean, 1 plus, one, 1 plus 2, which is 3. Because what returning is, is you can send information back to where you called the function, and maybe you want to use it later on. So maybe we can say local function. Oh, whoops. Let me make sure I'm still recording, which I think I am. Okay, so local function. Um, all right, let's see here. <laughs> Only add number one if first parameter. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to say subtract numbers. So we're going to have uh, number one again, number two. This is our new function. Um, so we can then say, so we have our result here, which is three, because we calculated it. We're then going to get another result. Result two um, is equal to subtract numbers. Our first, well, maybe we should finish this first. So our number one is going to be the bigger number, and we're going to subtract it. So number one, oh, hold on. Give me a second, guys. Okay, so it'll be... Um, local difference will be equal to number one minus number two. And then you can say return difference. All right, so we're going to put in here result. And then uh, we're going to subtract three away from five, I guess. So we are going to print result two. Let's print result and result two. All right, so let's play the game. And when we play the game, we have three and negative two. Wait, I think I got that wrong. I think I need to swap these around. So this needs to be five. So five. Okay, play it again. And there we go. Yep. So as you can see, we have our result from the first function, um, which is three, because we put it here, our first result. And we got that information back from the function right here. And I do want to let you guys know that returning stops the script. So that's why people say if, if you know, not whatever, like condition, then return end. That is because returning, it, you know, it just stops the whole script uh, when you're done. So that's why it should be at the end of everything else if you're returning something. Okay, so we got our three, and then we are going into our subtract numbers, and we're subtracting three away from five. And again, that gives us two. Now, I would do want to let you guys know now that you can return multiple values. It's like anything else. So, let me clear this and close it. I'm going to say add and subtract numbers. I think, yeah, I think I'll do it like that, okay? So we have add and subtract numbers. All right, so using our numbers here, we're gonna add them as well as subtract them. 
Oh, why well, I did not mean to do that. Okay, so then we have our sum, which will be these adding, and then we're going to have difference, uh, which will be, I forget how I just did this, but I'm just going to say number one minus number two. I think it's, wait, yeah, I think I'll just say number one minus number two. Now, you wouldn't say return, return sum, return difference because uh difference because if you did do this it'll error because um you only can return the first time so by here it'll stop so that's why it's giving an error because you can't return again so what you would say is return sum comma difference and that's the the case with any other information that is coming from this function like you would say comma you know any information that is coming from this you would put a comma after now what you have to do is when you call this function uh, local results well actually you would say sum comma difference is equal to add and subtract numbers one into well I'm gonna say five and ten okay because it is the same thing here we are returning the sum and difference so sum that is the first thing returned so this will be sum and the same thing here. All right, so we are going then. So then we can print sum, and we can also print difference. Okay, so when we play the game, and check the output, it says 15 because we added it, but it goes into the negative, so I did it wrong. I have to say number two, number one. So play the game again, and there you go, because we are subtracting 10 away from, or we are subtracting five from 10. But we are also adding that. So you can return multiple things back to the function to where you called it. But guys, uh, you don't have to have a variable here. If you just want to call this, like, um, if you just call this, then you can, like just the function, then you can do that. Add and subtract numbers. If you just call that, it'll do the same thing. But I do advise you guys, if you are using the values outputted from the function, I'd recommend you put it in a variable so you can use it uh, later on. Alright guys, so now what I'm going to get into is another really useful thing. So I'm going to create a function called um, part creator, creator, and we're just going to leave it at that. Now I'm going to make a new part. So instance.new parts, and I'm going to just customize a little bit, like can collide equal to false, or part.size equal to vector3.new, part.anchored uh, is equal to true, part. Uh, okay, and part.parents will be able to gamer.workspace. We are then going to return, well, wait, that's not, not yet. So when we call part creator, it makes our part right now this is how it is in object oriented programming if you guys are advanced enough to know about that but you say return if you wanted to use the part later on in the script and change it you would want to say return part so the part is returned back to this function by saying local part is equal to this that is the same exact thing like that is why you would use it in object oriented programming so you can use that object and use it for all your other things. So now we have the part, right? This is really um, useful if you are creating something, because um, if we just create the part, we would have to like um, set a name to it and just keep getting it over and over again, but we can just say return part, and then we have the actual object, this, right here, just in our part, all right? So then we can just say like, we can go back and say part, Dot, and we have all, all this stuff now. We can then say touched uh, connect function or whatever you guys want to do to the part. Um, so print touched. All right, so we're going to call it and we play the game. Well, here's our part. It's in the ground. I don't think anything should have printed yet. Okay. So we're going to move it. All right, we're going to... Oh, why is my... I can't even select a tool. That's weird. 
We're just gonna move it. I don't think anything should have printed, but I didn't do any security checks. But now when we touch it, then it says touched. And yeah, guys. So returning is really useful for getting objects that are only stored in functions so that they can be used uh, later on. And as well, guys, that you can return anything that you uh, like really want, that you want to send back. And yeah, I think I have another example, guys, but I'm going to see. Okay, guys, so let's say you're making a shop, all right? Now, so yeah, say you're making a shop. And in the shop, you have your player's currency, and you want to buy something. When you go to buy, you know, you have to check if the player has enough currency. So let me just set this uh, up for you guys. Okay, guys, now this seems kind of like a lot, but this is a small example. So here, this is just giving us our leader stats, so our uh, in-game currency, our coins. And then I have this part in-game. Alright, so I have this part, and what I'm doing with it is when you click on it, because I have a click detector in it, when you click on it, it's checking if you have enough coins, uh, which is 100. If you do have at least 100 coins or more, it's going to subtract 100 coins away, and then it will return purchased. But if you don't have enough, then uh, you can just say error, or not enough, and not enough money. Um... So, yeah, that's why you can check to see what uh, happened in your game. Sorry, guys, what you want to do is, uh, I kind of mix this up. Uh, I made a function called buy item and part. Click detect your mouse click. We're going to uh, get all that. So when the player clicks on it, and I'm going to say buy item with the player. And I'm going to uh, get a result. So if we had purchased it or not enough money. And then I'm going to print result. So play the game. Uh, we see that I have my coins currency. And it's over here. So my, my part's over here. Nothing should be erroring. So I click it and I don't have a, um, 100 coins. So click it. Check the output. And it says not enough money. Uh, so that's how we can identify that I don't have enough money. Uh, let me give myself 100 coins. Let me just give myself 500 so I have 500, click, has four, I have 400 now, check, and it says purchased. And yeah guys, that was today's video. If you guys did learn something from this video or you guys just enjoyed it, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.